One thing about English people, they like to think that they're very virtuous. We like to think that we have the best schools, we have the best police, we have the best everything that is British. We want to tell ourselves it's the best. And some of it is good, but not good for all people. And I think that's where we need to challenge, because when you look at those who do not get that fair treatment, often it's minority people. This country experienced something that we don't often want to talk about. It's the racial rights. And the racial rights were very significant because for the first time, the society shamefully had to face up to racial discrimination. And I'm certain that many people contributing to this program will be able to share many, many personal experience and we owe it to those groups that they survive because physically, mentally, emotionally it was challenging but they survive. Green restaurants are very very hard you know like say anywhere you go you know get out of here you shouldn't be in my country and so on and so on. In the old day when I came I was only 19 you could not get I couldn't get into a college to say further my education because they didn't want us. They didn't even want us in church. Churches go to that, honest to God. I, the most racist was in white church. And there were two ministers here in this church. They would kill you with showing off words and treating bad personally. The people weren't very friendly for a start, the white people. They weren't very friendly. We go through a really rough time in the 60s with them. Because um, you're going to work, and you weren't known by Jeff or Patrick, you were known as Sambo. All right? Everybody, Sambo, Sambo, Sambo. It's only after that I realized that I actually sunk into a depression because I was just thinking about my friends back home and my relatives that I've left behind, and to see everything around me is a bit dark. You know, I, I didn't want to come out of the room. My mom would say, you know, when this, when, when this summer comes, it's going to be very nice. But that didn't mean a thing to me. Yeah, so it was a bit of a sad time for me. And this was in the 70s, late 70s. And this guy used to work, uh, he's, um, three, four of us used to be in the, go to the pub from work, stick, skip out of work and ch jump in the club and so on. And one, night, one of them come around and said to me, Oh, you Sambo, you know, you black so-and-so. And this other one says to him, because he was a Irish and the other guy Irish and Lava said to him, Why are you calling him that? He says, You think you're, so you're any different from us? He says, You go up by Midland counties and look and see what's on the wall. No blacks. No Irish. No dogs. No spicks. That was what was written up. They didn't, wouldn't rent you the place. You would go and you want a room and it was got vacant. And you knock the door and they say, Sorry, no vacant, because you're black. You didn't want to know. In those days, the advertisement in agent, housing agents was, um, as, we on, as we know, you know, no blacks, no Irish, no, uh, even no dogs, you know. The, that was the actual, ad, practically the adverts. My father had, had a, an experience of my sister going to nursery school, and um, when he came to collect her one day, instead of my mother, um, they, um, th th they were quite taken aback, um, to put it mildly. Um, and the next day, um, they, they called my, um, they spoke to my mother and they said um, that we didn't, we'd, we feel it would be um, difficult for my sister, this is my older sister, um, to um, carry on there. So um, my father uh, decided that there and then that, you know, um, we need to find somewhere different. We need to find somewhere where they will, we will be, the ch our children will be accepted. I can remember going to primary school and being the only black child in school and then eventually me and my brother were the only black children and that was um, in an Eton from primary school to the first beginnings of junior school. 
and, and then we moved to Coventry, which was a, a little bit more um, multicultural. Outside the factory, into the social life, it was, it was even worse. Because you go, if, you, if you want to go into some social activities, pubs or clubs or so on, you could not go in on your own because you wouldn't come out in one piece. You know, and, and that was one of the worst things about the place because anywhere you go, you had to have company. In those days, if you look at a white man too hard, the police would come up and they would just take you away, no matter what, if you were innocent or not. You remember, we had, I tell you what, we had some hard times. We did went through some hard times, especially in Nottingham of the Age. Racial discrimination that was going on, which I grew up in, I asked questions I didn't really understand, but I was wise enough to ask the questions, yeah, but didn't understand the answers. So often you would hear the English say, you people come and you take our jobs. And there was this factory in Leamington, Flavors, and this young man said to me, you come, you all come and you take our jobs. You Pakistani. Obviously, he doesn't know who a Pakistani was, what a Pakistani looked like. Some people, because they're not wearing this colour skin, they don't see the racism and they think something is funny and something is jovial. And actually, something is really quite hurtful and something is short-sighted and some things are nasty, you know, and... That, that is a challenge to make people understand that. The very first day I actually went out on my bike, I was attacked, and I mean attacked, by uh, a gang of boys. And they pulled me off my bike and chucked my bike and they kind of battered me a bit and I went home crying. Um, and I told my, my old man, I told Papa, and then Papa would come out and he'd have words with them and they'd all run off and then it would all happen again. And then I got kind of frightened about going out at all. And then Papa said to me, he said to me one day, he said, Cheryl, you're going to have to learn how to deal with these things. Life isn't easy, life is hard, and you're going to have to learn to fight your own battles because I'm not always going to be here. Um, so, th so that kind of was, was, um, was shaping my mind in terms of going forward. You don't accept these things. It is not normal and you don't accept it. I'm not sure about this, the racial element of most things because I think perhaps I was very naive and if we were called names we just took it in our stride because my parents wouldn't have said oh well you just you give as good as you get you know we just carried on and lived I think my brothers were more <laughs> involved in the racism issue with the skinheads and all of that but I kind of kept out of the way. You can fight, you don't have to use your fists. You don't have to use your mouth loud and clear. You can fight in many different ways. And I think that's what my mother taught me in that she said, there's more than one way to skin a monkey. <laughs>